Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for kind words. And uh, for today, my topic is uh, the management of detected diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So, as we all know that we are facing one of the biggest pandemic of type 2 diabetes that uh, the prevalence is increasing day by day. That's why management becomes important as uh, the Oration, presidential Oration lecture sir, has told that the eras were there and now it is cardio renal eras and uh, the glycemic memory uh, which has to be there. Brief introduction, the International Diabetes Federation Atlas shows that the prevalence of diabetes is quite high and involved approximately 540 million population being diagnosed with the diabetes and in uh, the population where the poor population or poor nation approximately 50 percent and this is the data which we and uh, if we have to talk about that uh, there was the uh, publication published in 2019 uh, in the Elsevier journals that the privilege incidence in 1990 and 2017 has significantly increased in all the age groups. So the same thing is with the prevalence. So if this is increasing, the burden of disease is increasing, management becomes very important. So if we have to diagnose, these are the criteria of diagnosis of diabetes which we all should know which is based on fasting blood sugars more than 126 or the but second hour serum glucose levels more than 200, HbA1c more than 6.5 or random more than 200 and at least two readings should be uh, in these range. We should not uh, call the patient as patient living with diabetes on just one reading. And uh, whom to suspect? Ideally any person who is more than 35 years should be screened because 70% times patients are asymptomatic. And uh, these are the ADA guidelines which suggest that the person, those who are having higher BMIs or those who are having a strong family history or they are at uh, uh, the family risk is high or there was history of uh, cardiovascular diseases or any other comorbid condition of metabolic syndrome like hypertension, obesity or infertility, the ph reduced physical activity, then these patients should be uh, uh, screened. And uh, as uh, Alvinda sir has stated in his uh, lecture, there were errors in management of diabetes. So earlier it was just glucocentric approach, which the patient usually comes to us and uh, we used to see that uh, what symptoms patient is having. We get the investigations done and we start the management of those patients giving some lifestyle modification along with the medications. But uh, now this era, uh, this uh, condition has changed. Now we are towards the patient-centric approach and since 2017, the guidelines clearly says that uh, the uh, patient-centric approach should be applied earlier. And uh, it is like the same thing that all persons are not same and all persons doesn't fit in same size. So same therapy is not uh, adequate for the all the persons. So now there should be comprehensive management and this circle we see all the ADA guidelines at the topmost corner, right hand corner in which they ask us that the patient's character should, uh, characteristic should be assessed that uh, is having what kind of addictions or uh, what uh, lifestyle patient is having. Then we have to talk about the uh, consider the treatment part in which uh, we have to discuss about uh, how these patients can be managed and then we have to ask them uh, discuss these patients because now patients are not of the patient they are our customers so we have to talk them that uh, these are the various therapies available in which we can manage them and then we have to come up a plan and then we have to implement it and the most important thing is we have to regularly follow up it because we have given one medication and ask them to follow up after 10 days or 15 days if they are not turning turning up because we, d we don't know that how this medication or this plan will work for that patient and the several time patient will come after 2 years and 3 years will say sab aapki dawaiyan chal rahi hain lekin kuch bhi aaram nahi hai humko unko ye batana zaruri hai ki follow up is very important because every patient is different and if the good uh, results are there patient is accepting it properly we can continue with it if not then we have to reconsider our
so now in patient centric approach the important thing is when the patient is walking we have to discuss about the symptoms and we have to uh, identify the needs of the patient and then we have to uh, give the plan of treatment so these are the factors in which we have to uh, make our choices uh, as uh, again the presidential oration lectures I has talked about individualizing the HbA1c target earlier sub patient all patients we were asking that the HbA1c should be less than 7 or 6.5 but now we have to individualize according to the various factors then uh, what is the risk of weight gain or hypoglycemia accordingly we have to identify the medications what are the side effect profile that the patient is more prone if the recurrent fungal infection genital infections are there certain drugs should be avoided then uh, what uh, the frequency and the regimen should be simple it should not be like that that key patient is not able to remember those things so that the adherence increases and the most important thing is the cost because several times patient stop medications on their own because of the higher cost so we have to uh, first whenever the type 2 diabetic patients are coming it is not like type 1 that generally in type 1 the micro and macrovascular complication doesn't present at the time of diagnosis itself but in several times type 2 diabetic patients are diagnosed they are undergoing some surgeries or they have some cardiovascular event and got admitted and that time their uh, blood sugars were on the higher side so we have to identify the cardiovascular risk factors we have to identify what is the uh, ckd profile what is the stage renal staging then uh, how prone the patient is for hypoglycemia like the elderly patients or the very young patients are at more risk of hypoglycemia retinopathy should be assessed immediately because if the retinopathy is there the chances of nephropathy is quite high and assessment of neuropathy should be done because several times uh, uh, patient will say that jab se aapki dawaiyan chalu hui tab se haath pairon mein junjunahat shuru hui earlier uh, they might not be remembering those symptoms because they might be having other symptoms like nocturia or body aches but uh, when the one things get controlled other complaints come up so we can say them at the time itself that you are having some component of neuropathy only so whenever we are setting a goal in the newly type 2 diabetic patients we have to set the uh, HbA1c goal what is our target for that patient we have to explain them about the glucose monitoring regularly or how frequently they should be done it should be done we have to assess for the comorbid conditions the hypertension is something which is very important because if hypertension and diabetes both are present the morbidity and mortality increases significantly and uh, the therapeutic plan includes the lifestyle management which is the backbone which includes good food uh, healthy uh, healthy lifestyle uh, including healthy food and physical exercises then comes the pharmacological therapies and uh, the uh, accessory pharmacological therapies to address the comorbid conditions so these are the various guidelines which suggest what should be our target of hba1c and uh, it is very fairly we can say in maximum it is less than 7% so individualization of glycemic targets is based can be based on certain factors like what is the duration of diabetes what are the risk of hypoglycemia how long uh, we are expecting the life expectancy of that patient like uh, if the patient is having some uh, cancer or very elderly patient we can have a uh, slightly relaxed hba1c target or uh, the patient is having any other comorbid conditions micro or macrovascular complications patient preferences are important because several times there is something called as relative hypoglycemia so we have to bring them down slowly slowly and then what are what resource settings we are working if we are working in poor resource settings like in government hospitals all there there also we can target slightly less hba1c target should be there because we don't want to have hypoglycemia because once hypoglycemic patient will never adhere to the medications so there should be the supportive management which includes the medical nutrition therapies very important exercises then uh, if the patient is overweight or severely underweight then uh, the weight uh, management should be done any kind of ad addiction if present we should ask them to stop so diet is something which is very important uh, there are several lectures with the diet also uh, we say that uh, the proportion of macronutrients and micronutrients should be in such an amount which uh, gives full nutrition and that is something called as medical nutrition therapy i will not be going through this slide then uh, the recommendations for the exercises 
are there that the minimum 150 minutes of exercise should be there uh, in a week time in which approximately 30 to 45 minutes should be the vigorous exercise and uh, these can be and the rest of the time can be uh, the normal uh, uh, cardiac exercise so there after lifestyle modification weight management and asking them to get de-addicted the plethora of drugs are there in our basket the oral drugs are there injectable drugs are there what to choose so this becomes something which is very difficult and uh, it has to be individualized again but uh, there are guidelines for us to help us what medications should be the best for our patient which is based on the expert committee opinions from the multidisciplinary experts and uh, these are based on basically the clinical real world uh, evidences which are divided again on the low or uh, high grade evidences and uh, uh, then the health economics of the patient so there there are international guidelines like ESD, ACE or the International Federation Diabetes Indian guidelines RSSDI and ESI so again this is something which we have discussed this is something very important the patient centric approach in which we have to take uh, the patient as their first choice and ask them what they want so here if we have to talk about as we have talked that uh, type 2 diabetes generally patient when present to us they have some cardiovascular all the renal complications or they might be overweight so here we can around 70 percent patients fits into that at the, the this was also discussed in the presidential oration lecture so sglt2 inhibitors and all the glp1 analogs becomes the first line choices because until unless contraindicated uh, because of their cardiorenal benefits and then if they can't be given we can use other molecules also so this guideline just suggests which molecule is best in what kind of patient but several times all patients will be coming up with the different glycemic levels kisi ka hba1c kam hoga kisi ka hba1c jyada hoga so then we have to decide how many molecules has to be started so AS guidelines helps us in deciding that how many molecules can be started or insulin has to be started. So if HbA1c is less than 7.5, uh, we can start with monotherapy, whatever we have decided. And then over the period of three months, we made uh, re again follow up whether the HbA1c is getting controlled or not, what target we have uh, asked for. And uh, if the HbA1c is more than 7.5 and between 9, then dual or triple drug therapy based on the other metabolic profile but if it is more than 9 all the patient is having any micro or macrovascular complications insulin are the best so the, we have RSSDI ESI recommendation which have been uh, worked up by our seniors and uh, these best these are the best suited for Indian patients so here we can say that uh, uh, they also recommend the same thing lifestyle modification is the most important metformin should be the first line until unless contraindicated we have to discuss about the other comorbid conditions and then we have to decide the OADs and if the uh, HbA1c is on the higher side multiple drugs can be started and then we have to intensify the glycemic uh, uh, medications uh, to achieve the glycemic target for initiation of the insulin also our ESI RSSDI guidelines recommend that uh, basal insulin long acting insulin is good uh, should be started initially until or if the patient is very poor premixes can all insulins are good but uh, basal is preferred over the premixes and uh, if the patient is having uh, the postprandial hyperglycemia then we should start the short acting also and uh, if the higher insulin resistance we are expecting higher doses of insulin can be started so this is the RSSDI ESI wheel which is very simple and it is based on basically the age body weight the complex uh, cardiovascular diseases the duration of diabetes uh, uh, and the uh, established cardiovascular diseases all the any food finances and then the uh, we have to talk about the glycemic indexes that the patient may not be having uh, glycemic variability and the risk of hypoglycemias and in the green uh, all available anti-diabetics can be used in orange if the patient is having uh, more risk than red are the something in which very limited numbers are there so the key points are that now the uh, the management has been shifted from the glucocentric to patient centric the targets of HbA1c should be individualized 
and uh, metformin is the first line until unless contraindicated we have to assess for the comorbid conditions and then make the therapy choices and uh, among the injectables glp1 rays are preferred because they have cardiovascular benefits thank you thank you for patience hearing